Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on part writing basics. And we're listening to a recording by Arvo Part. Part writing doesn't actually mean to write like Arvo Part. But it's still nice to listen to this piece. So in a species counterpoint, you've had some practice writing for two voices. Now we're going to add two more voices to that, creating the standard uh, four part writing that is started. common in theory courses. And those four voices from highest to lowest are the soprano, the alto, the tenor, and the bass, satba. Um, so a lot of the things that we've learned about writing for two voices will also apply to writing for four voices. Voice leading is another name for part writing because you're leading those four voices carefully so that they form chords with each other and that they create interesting lines. So voice leading is the art of leading the voices through the harmonies. Here's an example of some four part voice leading in the key of F major. All right, we have our melody. Which is all stepwise. Our bass line is more jumpy. Gives it less the roots. Now notice the alto and tenor parts in the middle. This is the alto. Also mostly stepwise, and the tenor. It's a fairly interesting tenor line. And each of these is easy to sing. And here's another example, G major. This is nice because some of the inner voices have a little more to do, such as the tenor part. It's actually a lot more interesting than our soprano voice. In this case. So you can do a lot of interesting things with voice leading. Uh, let's talk about some of the part writing basics that you need to know in order to do this though. First of all, Keep in mind the proper ranges for these voices. Uh, the white notes here are the regular ranges. The black would be ex possible extensions. You want, for most of the time though, you want to keep the voices near the middle of this range, not towards the extremes of these ranges. But these notes are possible. Uh, so here's an error. You can see tenor's too high. The alto's also too high in this example. Um, again, keep them in their middle tessituras, even though they can sing in a low or high range, uh, they're not want, going to want to be there all the time. Spacing. Uh, we need to space the voices out correctly uh, to get a nice balanced sound. Um, the general rule is you don't want the upper voices, the top three voices, to be spaced out more than an octave apart from each other. So here's an example of bad spacing between the alto and the soprano. There's more than an octave between the soprano and alto. The same is true uh, from the alto to the tenor, not more than an octave. This uh, doesn't apply to the bass and the tenor. It's fine to have a very wide spacing between those two voices. It's the upper three voices that we want closely, more closely spaced. Um, there are names for different types of positioning if you have a uh, all three voices within an octave, we'll call that close position uh, as opposed to open position. So here's a close position G major triad because the top voices are within an octave and here's open position. This is a different type of sound so neither one of those is incorrect. That's just different uh, ways of balancing and spacing the voices out. Voice crossing. Uh, we try not to have much voice crossing. Keep the voices in the proper order. Um, here, because of the stems, you see that the alto is singing above the soprano. 
Um, then in your theory exercises, there's not much need for this. It could happen in a choral piece, of course. Another thing to generally avoid is voice overlap, where one voice leaps above or below the previous pitch of another voice. Now, in this case, you see the alto leaps above where the soprano previously was. We call that a voice overlap. That's not terrible to do, but uh, it is it uh, can make it tricky uh, for the singer. Uh, and as these are guidelines, they're not rules. Um, if it improves the melodic line or improves the voice leading, sometimes we, we will not follow these guidelines. Um, but in the general case, you would want to follow the guidelines. It's usually going to make things smoother. Doubling. Since we're spelling three note chords, triads, but we're using four voices, we're going to have to double one of the voices. Um, if you're spelling root position chords, just always double the root. Again, there's probably cases where an exception would be made, but in the general case, you're going to have two roots, one third and one fifth. Uh, if you look at this example, we have an F major chord, there's two Fs. We have a C major chord and we have two Cs. Another F major chord, two Fs. Another a B flat chord and we have two B flats. Uh, and the other two notes of course are the third and the fifth. So this is the standard doubling. Here's how this sounds. It gives us a good balanced sound with a strong root. Um, now with inverted chords, this will be discussed later, there's various options for inverted chords, but it generally works to double the bass note unless that bass note is a leading tone. Never double the leading tone. The leading tone being scale degree 7 in any scale. So in this key of G, the leading tone is, is F sharp. Uh, the leading tone is such a, has such a strong tendency to resolve up that you don't want to strengthen that tendency or overpowers the, the balance of the sound overall. So that's why we don't double the leading tone. It, it doesn't sound good. Chord spelling. Um, overall then, for if you have a root position chord, you're going, going to want to have two roots, one third, one fifth. Uh, make sure you don't leave the root out, obviously. And you also don't want to leave out the third, or you won't be able to hear the quality of the triad. Uh, it is the third that tells if, it, if, a, if a chord is major or minor, for example. So the root is the most important. The third, as I said, tells us the quality. But the fifth is occasionally left out. Um, it's not quite as crucial as the other notes. And if you only had three parts, uh, you could leave that fifth right out. Even in four parts, you can leave the fifth out if it improves the voice leading. Um, this would probably mean tripling the root, so three roots and, and one third. This is common at a final cadence. You might have um, a really strong root. Uh, less common to have two roots and two thirds. Okay, so those are the voice leading basics, and I think you're ready for the quiz.